I've made multiple videos that can essentially be boiled down to saying Zoophilia bad. To the point I'm sure a handful of people in my audience are getting tired of me repeating it. I mean, there are only so many times you can preach to the choir before people get exhausted from hearing it ad nauseum, as am I from feeling the need to repeat it. But it seems that more and more, there are these fringe incidents of people with sizable platforms attempting to dip their toes into the act of normalizing zoophilia, some doing so with almost worrying subtlety, while others handle it with about as much subtlety as a bull in a china shop. I want to talk to you about a recent post that rubbed me the wrong way, a post about giving community to a rather vile group of people, as well as a not-so-recent video displaying why we shouldn't be providing that group of people community. As there isn't much for us to warm up with, let's just get into it by talking about the artist Krubes. Krubes is a theory and furry artist that has garnered quite the following for herself. Recently, she found himself in some hot water due to a tweet thread that seemed agreeable enough at first, but would possess a rather suspicious intention with it. She would post on June 22nd, 2024, saying, You are not for art liberation if you don't make space for the weird art, the immoral art, the art that makes you uncomfortable, the art that makes you unfollow, the art that your friend hates, the fetish art, the kink art, the... And yes, this includes all art. But what if it's sexual? Yes. But what if it's legal in real life? Yes. But it all art must be allowed even the art you hate. I'll venture to say that some of the knee-jerk reactions to this come from a place of viewing others as disposable, if they're not understandable. Hot take. The artists that you don't or refuse to understand will always deserve the same place and respect as the ones you do. There is no I agree except you must protect it all. You don't have to like it, interact with it, or make it, but it has a right to exist. Now, just by reading that by itself, I'd say it's a pretty agreeable stance. I don't think artwork should be censored solely due to it making people uncomfortable. Like most people, I want art to make me feel an emotion. An example I feel fits this idea is one by Dino Buzzati called The Morning Visitor. Given what this piece is conveying, one could argue for the removal of the last few panels, leaving the violence committed implied rather than showing both said violence as well as the end result. This would make the piece more palatable, but removing what makes the piece somewhat comfortable to look at would be to remove the impact of it, essentially ruining the piece. However, this concept wasn't exactly what the thread was referring to, as it came in tandem with a similar post on her Not Safe For Work Twitter account, one that Cruz retweeted on main and completely changed the context of the thread I just read. Post said, If you're really about people getting better or abuse prevention, you will understand that even pedophiles and zoophiles need community, support, and the right to artistic expression just like every other person on this earth. When do you stop viewing other people as people with basic needs and the right to better themselves? Not all pedos are abusers. Not all zoophiles are abusers. If you deny people with taboo attractions the right to heal via art slash community, you are not about it. So, where do we begin? Well, for starters, I'm sure you can guess what type of artwork a pedo or zoo would use to heal. Artwork that shouldn't be held on the same podium as the avant-garde works I assumed their threat was referring to. There's a wide difference between artwork specifically made to deliver a message and artwork made specifically to arouse a group as mentally ill as pedophiles and zoophiles. If someone is unfortunate enough to suffer an attraction to children or animals, then yeah, that truly sucks for them. A defect like that should be met with support in the form of a psychologist or qualified health professional. But to say that zoophiles and pedophiles deserve to heal through community and art? When it comes to the furry fandom, pedos and zoos don't deserve to be here. People with a sexual attraction to children shouldn't be allowed in a community with children present. People with a sexual attraction to animals shouldn't be allowed in a community where animals and aspects of them are a core staple. So why would we allow them here? To heal through feral porn and cub? To allow them a chance at taking advantage of members in the fandom? Now, with how Twitter functions, one would assume that these posts were either made with the worst of intentions, or that the OP just didn't think things through. Going through Krub's feed, I am more inclined to lean towards the latter. 
seeing a number of Krub's posts, I see a mindset of someone who believes in communities coming together to help people from their lowest points in life. Seeing that, it does at the very least explain their logic behind this. However, at a certain point, you do need to take into consideration that people with this affliction can and will and have taken advantage of that mindset time and time again. Anyone who's interacted with or is a part of the furry fandom, hell, even the LGBT, should be more than aware of how both pedos and zoos will latch on to communities and use them to defend their horrid actions. Just because a few virtuous pedophiles exist doesn't mean we should be giving a chance to everyone who comes out announcing they have an attraction to minors. We should be getting them psychological help, not a community to let them express their paraphilia through art. Because when you allow these people into your community, regardless of the things they condone, you end up with more and more people like Kiro the Wolf, who believe they can sexually abuse their dog to death and still somehow have a place in the community. And you continue to end up with people like the next person on our topping block, Senny Husky. Senny Husky is a furry in his presumed mid-30s, mostly known for his past as a DJ, notably at the Gay Furry Club on Second Life. However, the reputation and the fandom seemed to slowly tread downhill when the dreaded Zoo Sadist Telegram leaks of 2018 came around. If you were to look into these leaks, you wouldn't exactly see Senny himself in the leaks, but you would see convicted Zoo Sadist and pedophile Levi Snake Thing Simmons mention Senny by name as someone looking for an animal to fornicate, Snake Thing saying, Oh, do you know any owners in Canada as well, by the way? Because Senny wants some zoo fun. He would also say, I've been looking for an owner for Senny in Canada as well. Not sure if I told you that. I may have found one. Now just to convince the person that may be able to assist to secretly film it XD. These messages were from 2017, and while these don't exactly confirm Senny engaged in bestiality or was a zoophile at the time, he didn't exactly make his interest in the label a secret beforehand. You could go back as far as late 2013 to see him liking a tweet linking to an off-site bestiality repository. However, he explains this off as something he mistakenly liked, but a rogue Twitter bug refused to let him remove the like when he tried. Something he claimed to capture in an OBS recording, but that seems to be lost to time as I couldn't find it posted anywhere. But apart from that, you also have Senny's deleted F-list account. That has Zoophilia placed in the Fae Fetishes column, alongside other fetishes like age play and underage characters. Not too surprising given the feral and cup porn he's commissioned of his Sona. There's also his Curious Cat account where in 2016 he was asked, Could you tell us more about the Zeta symbol in your Twitter profile description? To which he would respond, If you know what it means, you know what it means. <laughs> I'm a fan. However, this is an archive of this answer. If you went to his Curious Cat account today, this answer is nowhere to be found. Maybe his account having one less answer on it has something to do with that. But I would say that the most incriminating moment of Senny's history would be in October 2018, presumably concerning talk in the fandom about the leaks. He would make a tweet in favor of Zoophilia, alluding to a belief of zoophiles not being a harm to animals. The tweet says, People losing their shit over some SJW crusade trying to attack people for just being zoophiles. Harming animals is wrong. People can't change what they like. Now stop shit posting and bullying people you don't know. Put your lips on this lipstick while you jerk it to anthro dogs fucking. Attached were two photos of Senny in Mersuit, Phallus exposed. Classic. This would lead into August of 2022 where Senny Husky would make a post talking about how he was facing multiple allegations of fornicating with an animal. He would state that not only were the allegations false, but that these allegations were pushing him into a dark place littered with suicidal ideation. Although he doesn't spend this thread attempting to debunk any claims of being a zoophile, he instead uses it to say that it's unfair people aren't engaging in conversation with him and are instead ridiculing him online. I mean, hell, he doesn't even denounce Zoophilia by name here. He denounces animal harm, as if to differentiate the two. He specifically states, I do not and never have supported animal abuse or cruelty. I have never had sex or sought sex with an animal, 
and I've addressed this directly before. You could say I'm playing semantics here, and you could have a point. However, that point would be rendered void roughly two years later. March 23rd, 2024, Cine would upload a tweet with the following caption, Zoophilia and the furry fandom. This has been a topic that has needed to be properly addressed for quite some time. I hope it offers some perspective. Hope you enjoy. Cine Husky uploaded a 20 minute video very reminiscent of a certain other coming out video that was released on the 20th anniversary of 9-11. He even felt the need to be in his VR chat avatar while doing it. Coincidence? So yeah, Sydney uses this video as an attempt to explain how zoophilia isn't about fornicating with animals, but it's about loving them beyond being their best friend. While also arguing that if it were to be about fornicating with animals, is that really a problem? I mean, you can't judge me for wanting to screw a dog because furries are kind of zoophilic in a way when you think about it. Yeah, it's one of those. I do not and will never support animal abuse for sexual gratification. I have never had sex with an animal in any manner. And this video is not encouraging people to fuck their dog, but I feel it important to understand what zoophilia actually is. A love and attraction towards animals in a fandom based around a love and attraction of being an animal. The zoophile label was thrust onto me for years within our community. And rather than just give the haters what they want and just disappear to further empower them to hate mob their next victim, I've decided to lean into it and talk about it. He starts by attempting to drag the fandom down with him, with the age-old claim of furries being inherently zoophilic, which isn't the case whatsoever. He even mentioned how people labeled him with the term zoophile for years, which it's a mystery as to why that would be. The video opens with him laying out what he plans to do in the video, which is go over zoophilia, bestiality, and zoo sadism. His tackling of zoophilia, how do I explain this? You know that one anti-furry line where it's like, you want to pretend to be an animal, you can get hunted down like one? Well, his tackling of zoophilia attempts to lend credence to that crappy retort. He mostly spends this section attempting to paint newer members of the fandom as hypocritical puritans for pushing out zoophiles while also getting their rocks off to anthro furry porn. This is based mostly on the fact that most in the fandom have anatomically correct genitalia on their characters. Zoophilia is defined as a sexual attraction of human towards non-human animals, which may involve the experience of sexual fantasies about the animals. So what does this mean? Well, it's a term used to label people who have an attraction to animals, but as we all know, attractions can take many forms. The furry fandom at its core is a highly expressive and sexually liberated community where people from all walks of life find commonality and community. Its members take on animal personas or fursonas. We use these as projections of characteristics and behaviors, be it that you want to project cat-like behavior, dog-like behavior, maybe you're even a horse. In which case, ooh, here's my number. With this, there's a lot of artwork that gets commissioned. There's an entire market and ecosystem within the community. From people who make fantasy <clears throat> silicone sculptures, artwork, fursuits, write stories, hold events and conventions, etc. Many would lead you to believe that the sexual aspect of the fandom is small and insignificant. But honestly, I think that the market can speak for itself and that the sexual aspect is more than what many who say this would lead you to believe. So what does this have to do with animals? Well, furry embraces and projects these animal characteristics, fetishizes it even. Sure, the animals are usually anthropomorphic, but that doesn't stop people from getting their animal characters drawn <clears throat> anatomically correct. And yet there seems to be an internal conflict within the community that has spun up over the last several years as the community has grown and a younger audience has appeared that feels that they can dictate what is acceptable. Now, let me cook a bit for this one because most outside the fandom and even some inside will probably think I'm burning down the fucking kitchen on first listen. Anatomical correctness has been a point of contention in the fandom for a while, but not to the point that there's some civil war here. It's usually treated as a preference as whether a person is or isn't comfortable with it. 
More often than not, accusations of a furry being a zoophile for an attraction to genitalia other than human comes from outsiders looking in at the fandom. It's usually baseless, but the logic behind it is understandable. Sure, the call can sometimes come from inside the house, but personally, as someone who's inside the fandom, I wouldn't find myself immediately labeling someone as a zoophile for getting off to schlong shapes other than human. I can rationalize that just because someone's getting off to a tentacle toy doesn't mean they actually want to get fisted by the uncooked calamari. His next argument about the fandom having a somewhat sexist approach to this is why I believe most here don't find it to be a zoophilic thing. It becomes pretty obvious that the fandom is predominantly gay, and almost fairly sexist in many aspects with the hypocrisy that some of its members display. Well, we so based. Yum yum, toast stick. No, you can't have that in your art. You're a zoophile. You can argue that there is a sexist double standard here, but at the same time, I feel you would have to be a zoophile to think about it in that manner. I would assume that for most non-zoos, their interest solely lies in taking different shapes of dong up their whatever, most of the time not thinking about the Guinness of animal it's usually attached to as it's usually separated from the actual feral animal in that moment. Or at least I would hope that's the reason. This can differ from person to person though, as I find myself being a bit indifferent towards it. I don't consider it to be inherently zoophilic, as some people can just crave a little variety up there so to speak. But I do still believe that it treads a thin line from time to time, usually in tandem with how much detail the artist puts into that shit. But when it comes to Senny, he believes that if you as a furry are sexual in any way whatsoever, that deep down, you must be some kind of zoophile. Much like sexual attraction at its core, zoophilia defines a draw towards characteristics, or anatomy, or personalities, or maybe all of the above. I personally believe that if there is any sexual aspect to your furriness, it is most likely from a deep-seated root of something that is zoophilic in nature. I think this is a very reductive way of viewing the fandom as a whole, and it's reminiscent of the way a lot of anti-furry people view the fandom as this cult where all we think about is having sex with each other in fursuits. It's hyper-focusing on a specific tree in this massive community and refusing to pan out to see the entire forest. The furry fandom isn't some massive mega orgy where everyone's fucking everyone, frontwards, backwards, 360 degrees, under the fridge. The fandom is a community that encourages self-expression above all else. That being said, there is quite a bit of difference between, say, expressing your sexuality and expressing a paraphilia. Call me crazy, but I don't think having a mental disorder is something one should be proud of. The part you're usually proud about is overcoming that disability and not letting it ruin how you go through your life. Like, I'm not proud to have ADHD, but I am proud when I overcome it and actually focus on something to completion. Albeit with the help of a little blue pill, but that's to say that zoophiles shouldn't be proud that they find animals hot. They should be proud in suppressing that paraphilia and celebrating each day they don't think about diddling lassie. If getting there requires seeking psychological aid, so be it. But you shouldn't be around people like this trying to convince you that's normal and doesn't require any tending to. Much of the harassment I've received from this topic being discussed often boils down to the trolls being mad because they are potentially in the closet about their own attractions and desires that make them uncomfortable. Wouldn't you like to know how many people from your past have come to me and explained how many skeletons are in your closet? It's the same as being the bully on the playground that picks on the flamboyant kid because they're uncomfortable with the fact that they're actually gay. Or maybe it's because Senny thinks people being sexually attracted to animals isn't an issue that should be tended to, to the point you have to project onto the people critical of you. And like every zoophile ever, he just has to rope the LGBT into his bullshit, because clearly these people can't seem to comprehend the difference between sexuality and paraphilia. And if that wasn't bad enough, Senny then argues the idea that being a furry against zoophilia goes against the fandom ideal of radical self-expression. And hating someone for enjoying artwork or animalistic projections, fantasies or desires becomes so thought policey that it actually goes against the ethos of furry at its core, radical self-expression and an exploration of fantasy. Again, not realizing that self-expression here rarely extends to paraphilias. I say rarely because feral porn can certainly feed into that paraphilia. 
You could argue that most people who get off the feral porn may not be zoophiles themselves because instead of going for the family dog, they're going for... I don't know, Nargakuga. Regardless, there are actual zoophiles out there who will opt to use that artwork as an outlet to keep them from indulging in the real thing. Is that a good thing? It depends on who you ask, I guess. I personally don't vibe with feral porn, so I'm not really the person you want making an argument in favor of it. But after that, we would lead into the bestiality section of the video. Now, Cine started this video out by saying that he hasn't and doesn't plan on fucking a dog. So, one would assume that he believes engaging in bestiality is wrong, correct? Before we continue, I just want to remind you that I do not condone the engaging with or the harassing of people I talk about in my videos. This section is so bad, I feel some of there might need the reminder. So, he gives the textbook definition of bestiality, a human fornicating with an animal. He then goes into the implications of committing the act, tackling them by strawmanning the usual expected arguments, with the usual flimsy rebuttals. Bestiality is illegal? Well, being gay is illegal somewhere. Oh, it's illegal. I personally believe that the legality of something does not determine its moral value. For example, homosexuality was, and still, is illegal in many places around the world. Bestiality is immoral? Well, people are homophobic somewhere. Oh, well, it's immoral. Morality is a complicated subject. Oh, brother! As just mentioned, homosexuality is also considered immoral in many places. I view it as immoral to eat dog. But why? When I'm willing to eat cow. What makes morality when it comes to bestiality such a taboo subject that even asking these questions is considered social suicide? Because fornicating with real animals will usually cause physical and mental harm to the animal. Also, it's not social suicide to touch on the topic of bestiality. It's just social suicide to condone it. When you think about bestiality, chances are you're probably thinking of the memes about a dog ganging on with a white woman. Most people don't have bestiality on the brains often, so most won't really think about how it extends to other, more fragile, sometimes even larger animals. And the more you think about it, the more you realize how things would devolve if the act of fucking animals was more and more accepted. You know those rules and laws that are so specific that when you read them you just know someone had to do it for there to be a rule against it? Well, remember that when the FDA passes a regulation about the illegal amount of seminal fluids allowed in ground beef. Ideally that wouldn't be something to consider when thinking about your food, but you never know. Farmers can get lonely too after all and they just might find this guy agreeable. Oh, and speaking of ground beef. What makes morality when it comes to bestiality such a taboo subject that even asking these questions is considered social suicide? Let's tackle some of them right now. Oh, animals can't consent. I don't really think they consented to being turned into a cheeseburger or some chicken nuggets but we find that morally acceptable. It wouldn't be an argument in favor of bestiality without that bullshit logic being spouted at least once. It's always presented like it's some gotcha and not something that blows up in their face if you so much as think about it. It comes off as if the person is trying to pull in all is okay or none is okay argument. Something that doesn't apply here as two wrongs don't exactly make a right. You're not stuck in a position where either you have to ask the animal to consent to being turned into food, or you don't have to ask for consent when it comes to bestiality. The animal can't consent to either act regardless. But at the same time, you can eat a hamburger and still realize that the family dog probably didn't consent to having their nethers mangled. Not to mention how this argument just doesn't even work if you try pulling it against a vegan. But let's disregard that because Cindy then pulls out another textbook excuse zoophiles use for bestiality. That bitch was asking for it. Yet, there are much simpler moral realities where animals display behaviors that they actually desire. What does the word consent mean when it comes to these behaviors? You know, I think I'm starting to see why Cindy considers talking about this subject publicly as social suicide. Because I for one would be pretty embarrassed to be a grown ass man having to ask, what is consent really? Oh look, that dog's wagging her tail. 
Bitch is obviously begging for it. The thing that gets me is that he searched up the dictionary definition for zoophilia and bestiality just fine. Surely he could have done the same for consent. I mean, he doesn't even attempt to use the non-verbal consent strategy people like this usually go for. He just uses the remainder of this section to grandstand, claiming that being against bestiality is hypocritical because of how we treat animals we eat for food. This doesn't even make me reconsider my stance on bestiality. It just makes me question if Senny actually fucked an animal or not. We'll obviously never know if he did unless evidence comes out confirming such, but he's just undermining his own statement through his adamant attempts to justify bestiality, all while claiming he isn't trying to normalize it elsewhere. If someone opened a video stating that they never fucked an animal, only to spend that same video justifying the act, why would I believe you didn't? It would be like me getting mad at my followers for calling me a murderer when I start a video saying I've never murdered anyone, only to pull an OJ less than 10 minutes in. But moving on from this section would bring us to the third part of the video, zoo sadism. Like most zoophiles, he disavows the practice because zoo sadists hurt animals for pleasure while zoophiles hurt animals for pleasure. But hey, at least they can mask it behind love, unlike those dirty zoo sadists. Zoo sadism is the sexual pleasure derived from cruelty to animals. It is a paraphilia where zoo sadists are sexually aroused by pain inflicted on animals. I'm sorry, but I feel I need to remind you how he couldn't do this for the definition of consent. I I'm, I'm still not over it. Zoo sadism is part of the McDonald triad a set of three behaviors that are considered a precursor to psychopathic behavior. Zoo sadism is an attraction, desire, or action where someone extracts sexual pleasure from cruelty to animals. I have always found this to be disgusting in nature. This is a huge red flag for me. I don't understand how someone can extract sexual pleasure from displaying cruelty towards an innocent animal. I legitimately don't understand the delusion someone can have to say that just after they spent six minutes justifying bestiality. To play dumb, as if you're above people who derive sexual pleasure from hurting animals, just because the animal harm is a side effect of bestiality rather than being the main goal in your case. Although after this, Cindy would actually surprise me by addressing his mention in the Zeus Sadist leaks of 2018, albeit rather vaguely. The furry fandom in itself has also had its own issues with Zeus Sadism. Hell, there was a leaked document from where a disgusting individual who's now thankfully rotting in prison name dropped me, never spoke with me, but referenced me in their conversations, trying to find someone with an animal to rape me without my knowledge and film it. For some reason, furries have played a game of telephone over the last seven or eight years when they look at this and believe this to be proof that I am some sort of horrible person. I've never even chatted with this individual, and I've never been in support of people harming animals for their own sexual pleasure. I didn't say he addressed it logically. I'm just surprised he acknowledged it at all. To touch on his mention in the Zeus Sadist leak, obviously those mentions alone aren't enough proof to claim he's a zoophile or fornicated with an animal, but it's enough to question what the deal with that is. And that's just the thing. He says the fandom played a game of telephone with the claim of him being involved with zoophiles. If that rumor had been circulating for the last seven years, you'd think Cindy would have addressed it at some point before now. Hell, if I got my name caught up in the logs of people talking about fucking their dogs, I'd be combing through that shit to prove my innocence as concisely and as soon as I humanly could. In Cindy's case, not only did he let that rumor go unchallenged for years, just to use mental health and misfortune as a cop-out to disproving his affiliation with the Zeusatis group, but even before that, he just added to the rumor by adamantly defending Zoophilia and having fun with people who were implicated in those same leaks he was mentioned in. Why do you expect people to have the full story to an accusation when you refuse to provide your side to it and instead just make yourself look more guilty? And to touch on that last line. I've never even chatted with this individual, and I've never been in support of people harming animals for their own sexual pleasure. Let's cut the bullshit here. You've been justifying it for 14 minutes so far. I'm not even going to bullshit you as the viewer. This video doesn't get better from here. The rest of the video is just a cascade of delusions that refuse to let up for the remainder of the runtime. Delusions that, I'll be real, I shouldn't have to explain to any mentally stable person. So I'll just give you a quick run through of what else of note Cindy does as we reach the end of the video. 
He says that people being strongly against zoophiles is driving them to becoming zoo sadists, as well as saying that people with larger platforms should break down the stigma of talking about zoophilia and bestiality. I have never been okay with zoo sadism. I know that we as a community can do better. I think that if we as a community were more willing to talk about attractions to animals in general, we can better engage in and facilitate discussions with people who may be our friends or a YouTuber and bring to light the fact that this type of desire is not okay and that they should seek professional help. If you get off to sexually assaulting animals, you are not okay. You should seek professional help. There, you're welcome. After the Zeusadism section, Senny will then say how all the hate the community sent his way was unjustified, and claim that furries are hypocritical for being against zoophilia because furry itself is inherently zoophilic, the same song and dance we've already gone through. However, this time he wouldn't just try bringing the furries and the gays down with him, no. He had to drag the Therians into this as well. Lately, there's been a large movement that I've noticed. A large amount of people are slapping a Therian symbol on their profile, or as I like to call it, Mzu Light, where people who used to be more open about a Zeta symbol on their profiles on Twitter now have replaced it with a Theta Data symbol as a way to signal their attraction and affiliation with being an animal. Pretty much the same thing that brought me into furry in the first place. I want to be an animal. No, I don't feel I'm too well versed to speak about the concept of Therians just yet. Therians appear to be a group that more so have a large overlap with the furry fandom rather than just being another subsection of it. But I can say that the Therians I've talked to and are friends with aren't Therians due to a sexual attraction to animals. I would assume that the claim of them being zoo light could easily be debunked due to their identity being on every level but physical, but I'm sure there are some Therians kind enough to share their stance in the comments below. Either way, this is where the video would end. Cine ending it as most YouTubers would. That's just my thoughts on the matter. What are yours? Feel free to comment down below. I have a few more videos planned. If you didn't like this, don't worry. A lion doesn't concern himself with the opinions of a sheep. Trust me, nothing makes a YouTuber seem more reasonable than when they call people sheep for disagreeing with them. If you did like this, and please remember, keep being yourself, keep being honest and open, and make sure to keep furry weird. You keep using the word. I don't think it means what you think it means. So you're probably wondering what the public reception to this video was. Eight or nine years, I've been under the social microscope. I've been thought... As you would assume, a large number of furry creators expressed their hatred towards Senny for coming out as a zoophile. However, you'll see a multitude of Twitter users saying how brave and well thought out the video was. Seeing that praise might seem confusing at first, until you notice that every tweet in support of this comes from yet another self-proclaimed zoophile. Something that brought me a bit of confusion, however, was scrolling through the YouTube comments where you would essentially have the same reaction as the Twitter replies, but then you just have Peace Wolf and Jason effects in there supporting him for some reason. I mean, given their polycule partner Kabir's fascination with feral porn, it makes sense. But the thing is, their comments don't really have anything of note to them. Both of their comments hardly even talk about the actual topic of the video, instead opting to give vague posts about cancel culture in the fandom. Jason's coming off as absurdly whiny, but regardless of that, there still lies the question. What does this have to do with Krub's post? Well, going through Krub's tweets, I got the impression that Krub's is a person who believes that everyone should have a community they feel they belong in. I mean, hell, that is how the fandom is supposed to present itself, right? It explains why they thought people with an arousal towards children and animals could get better as long as they had people around to help them work through it, you know? But as I said before, that process being viable fully hinges on the assumption that these people actually want to get better, that they actually acknowledge their paraphilia as what it is, and want to seek help suppressing it. And as I just showed you with Cine Husky, with the people who support the and peddle the same shoddy snake oil he's selling, they don't see their affliction as a problem. They believe their affliction should be accepted as another walk of life, 
that being gay or transgender is in the same ballpark as wanting to fuck your dog. I'm all for people in need of help getting that help, but when you have these zoophiles and pedophiles invading well-meaning communities like our fandom, attempting to sway and groom the people inside it into thinking they're just as sick as them, that just because they like anthro artwork that they must want to screw their pet. Why would we continue to keep our doors open to them in hopes that the zoophile we come across is one of the virtuous ones? That's all I can really say while assuring this video stays intact. I'll be real, the words I've had to keep pocketed just to maintain some display of composure during this would surprise you. I'm a pretty nonchalant guy, but there's something about people defending the harming of animals and children that gets under my skin to an unreal degree. So best believe me when I say I'm probably going to be taking a break when it comes to talking about those type of freaks. It's about time I made some content that we can both walk away from with at least some faith in humanity still intact. That should be coming soon though, but until then, be sure to like, subscribe to the channel, and all that usual YouTube crap. And hopefully I'll see you again in the next upload. Stay safe out there.